Hello everybody and welcome back to Renovated Lifestyle. Today we're diving into the fun topic every student loves and that's exams. Now exams are just terrible. No one likes them. You have midterms, finals, exams from random parts of the school year. You're probably always testing at some point during your college career. I know my sophomore year we had tests every other week and it was not a good time. And with exams come lots of test taking anxiety or exam anxiety. We're stressed about not letting our grades fall, not letting a bad test score ruin our GPA or ruin our grade for that class. And there's a lot of things that can happen. You can be overwhelmed and not know how to actually take a test when you get overwhelmed by these feelings of test anxiety and stress and wanting to do good. So with that said, I'll be diving into some of my top test taking strategies for students. These range from things to do before the exam, during the exam, and just different techniques to kind of ground yourself and make sure you're being really focused and present while taking your test to the best grades possible. So on to the test taking tips. My first tip is to scan all the questions before you even start taking the full exam. So let's say you have like a 20 question multiple choice exam, skim through all of them, kind of see where the content is, what the questions are asking you. I like to see if any other questions can answer different questions. So for example, let's say question five asks me about a calc differential equation. Um, we forget the equation for that, but that equation is a reference in a past or later exam problem that just help you solve that first problem. So look for connections like that across your exam booklet. Um, I've had multiple exams where an answer on a previous question helped me also solve a future question in the exam or vice versa. So scan all the problems, look for easier ones first to so rack up those points first of all, and then go back to the more difficult ones or concepts you might be a little bit more iffy on. My next tip is to try and answer without looking at the answer choices. I say this because the answer choices can make you biased. So let's say you have a good idea of what the answer should be, but then there's two really, really close answer choices, and now you're not as confident. I recommend just answering in your head first, getting confident with that answer, and then looking for that answer within the answer choices. If it's there, you're probably correct. If it's not, that's a sign, okay, maybe let's look at some of these questions, see if this triggers any memories back from class or lecture notes, and then answer using the answer questions. Don't just try to answer based off the choices because you might confuse yourself or might second guess yourself a lot more easily compared to if you answer in your head first and then look for the answer on the sheet. My next tip is to cross out any irrelevant information. Now do this lightly in case you end up needing that information, you cross out the wrong thing, but just cross off any extra numbers, any extra storyline, any extra data, and actually circle stuff you will actually use. This just helps you focus on what the problem is actually asking you and that we're not wasting time trying to sift through a bunch of different numbers and equations you aren't even gonna actually use to solve the problem. So cross out irrelevant stuff. My next tip is to do a memory or brain dump the second you get your exam. So the second they say you can start on that first page, I always just write down helpful equations, things I forgot during class, kind of misconceptions I had. So things I missed in the past, I write those down really quick so I wouldn't make the same mistake. That way you don't forget those things where you're halfway through the exam. You can go back to that front page and reference those equations, reference those facts you told yourself. And it's just helpful for making sure that you have a good kind of mini cheat sheet right off the bat when you start your exam that we're able to, okay, I have brain dumped these important concepts. I know they're here. I can come back to them during the exam and use them. So second papers in hand, you have permission to write down anything you might forget when you're taking the exam. Again, don't do this before the exam starts because that's technically cheating. Just make sure you brain dump once you can actually start your exam without any notes and stuff in your desk. Again, this is just getting it to where you're able to have a reference sheet in case you panic or kind of freeze up. You have those equations written down right at the top of your head, right when you start on your exam booklet, ready to go. My next tip is for prior to the exam, and that's to get to your exam room early. And so with that, that means you want to get there about 15, 20 minutes early, find a seat, get set up, and just do some mindful breathing and kind of just prepare yourself, essentially. You'll do a lot better if you have time to prepare rather than running at the last minute, throwing your stuff down, scrambling for pencils and paper and calculator, and going to the exam in a rush mind state or a rest mindset. So sit down, give yourself time, talk to your friends if they're there as well, go through any last equations you need more refreshing on, but then just use that time to breathe and just relax and focus yourself on what you're about to do for the next hour or two. My next tip is to read the instructions on the exam booklet. This might seem self-explanatory, many people don't do it, and it can actually cost them. Not all exams will be the same, like your exam for English will be the same for math and vice versa. Many students fall into the trap if it's for the same class, they won't read the instructions, 
but sometimes the instructions give you helpful hints saying, oh, use this equation for this problem or reference this, ignore this part of this problem. It's just helpful information. Not all tests will be the same. So please read the instructions. They can save you time and potentially give you more points um, by helping you solve a problem by giving you hints. My final tip for test taking is to answer all the questions. Unless your teacher says you'll lose points for answering incorrectly or says that there's some other strategy you should use, don't leave questions blank unless you be penalized for them. You, If it's a multiple choice test, typically you have a 25% chance of getting the answer right by guessing. So if you absolutely don't know, make an educated guess, but don't just skip unless you lose points. I know for things maybe like the SAT or ACT, you might lose points for just guessing incorrectly. Um, other examples, you just lose points for not answering at all. So talk to your teacher about their policies for not knowing an answer, whether it's best to skip or best to answer, and just show your work. Many teachers do partial credit, especially for math exams or physics or science exams. So show your work, show the process, show the steps. Even if you get the answer wrong, you could potentially still get some makeup points on the back end. With that, those are my test taking tips for college students. Again, don't let exam season take you over, get the best of you. A score is just a score. You can bounce back from a bad score. You can bounce down from a good score. So don't get too cocky on the flip side. But also, it is just an exam. So breathe. Not that in the world, if you fail an exam, you can always go talk to your teacher, get some more tutoring, and be better for the next exam you have coming up. If you have any questions about exam or test taking skills, drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you at the next video. Till then.